Hello everybody, Joseph Anderson here again. I'm actually doing a repair today on a 5-ton York system. It's a gas pack. Um, we're actually going to be doing a uh, leak search and repair, and also I need to change out the condenser fan blade. So I will show you that right now. Okay, here is the unit that we're actually going to be doing the leak search and repair, and also changing the fan blade on the condenser fan. So here if you see, it's a York system, 5-ton. Um, it's a gas pack. If you notice, your gas line's coming down, comes through. That's your gas line, so it's a gas pack, package unit, uh, commercial equipment. Um, here's a few things you're going to need when doing a uh, leak search and repair on a commercial equipment. First, you're going to need, of course, nitrogen for leak check in the system. Of course, you need a 410A refrigerant. You need a vacuum pump to actually put on the vacuum. After you're all done with your welds and you leak search it, uh, leak check it again, just make sure your welds are good. Of course, you need your torches. Um, of course, you need gauges, virgin great gauges. Make sure they're set for our, able to read a 410A. Um, you know, some sandpaper, a drill. Right here is a um, big blue. It's your your bubbles that that you actually spray on your weld, or when you're leak searching. Um, it's pretty good stuff. Um, and then also on this one, we're going to be changing the blade. So here's your blade, condenser fan blade, and your hub. And that's pretty much it for that. Okay, we have our gauges hooked up with the nitrogen. Notice you just hook up your yellow hose to your nitrogen tank. And then your red for your high side and blue for your low side. Um, just make sure you have all your um, places that are opened up so you know you can actually leak check like the coils cleared. Okay, so I'm going to be spraying that coil, making sure. And then inside, you actually remove the motor. Just flip it over to its side, and you can look down inside. And if you notice, there's all your, your compressors and your um, discharge and suction lines, TXVs, um, and stuff. So you can actually leak check all that. Okay, I am inside the housing area where the compressor and, and where the condenser fan was. Um, Right here, actually where I sanded it down, that's where there's a leak, right here coming out of your uh, your discharge. And also here on this capillary tube, you can see there's a hole right there. So I sanded it down, you wanna make sure it's nice and clean um, before you braze it and try to repair it. Same thing with this, just sand it down, make sure it's nice and clean before you repair it. So far that's pretty much what I found out of the two. Um, once I get these ones fixed, then I'll go ahead and do another uh, um, leak search or leak uh, leak check um, just to make sure my welds are good and go from there. All right, so we got our, our uh, copper all sanded down. It's all nice and clean. So I'm just going to show you on your pressures what it's supposed to be on your acetylene. It's supposed to be 10, 10 PSI. And then on your oxygen, it's supposed to be 40 psi around there between yeah 10 and 40 years ideal for your gauges so there you go so you look on there 10 psi 40 psi all right okay we're going to start with this uh line here this capillary tube we're going to go ahead and repair that one first um just make sure you got something um to light your your torch you got some uh, brazing rod right here, and here we go. So I heat it up, heat up really hot, so then it actually melts it.
we'll go ahead and check that, make sure we're good. dump some water on it to kind of cool it down so you can actually touch it and look at it and make sure your your welds are good your brazes Just dump some water on there see how we did all right so we got a little bit underneath here to do just a little bit still a little hot but there's a little bit underneath here I got to finish up All right, and then yeah, once you're done with that, you just, because uh, um, I got one more weld to do, one more braze on this side. Once I'm done with that, then I'll go ahead and leak search it again just to make sure my welds and my brazes are good. Okay, I'm done actually with the, the repair. Um, see it, I actually brazed it there on your discharge line. And I did it there on the capillary tube. Um, so far it's holding pressure. I got um, about 200 PSI inside my gauges I'm just gonna let it sit 15 20 30 minutes um, just make sure it's not gonna drop any um, but yeah what you're seeing is just the bubbles I'm actually just leak checking it uh, throw some bubbles on there if it starts blowing up bubbles then you know you have a leak and then keep an eye on your gauges and see if they're dropping so for now that's pretty much it for this one okay see we're actually holding um, about 200 pounds on your high side and a little over 200 on your low side but as long as we stay like that um, 10 15 minutes 20 minutes whatever you want to do on this uh, you can actually uh, make sure you don't have any leaks this way just leak leaks check with the uh, um, big blue you know the bubbles and just keep an eye on your gauges if you start seeing that high side and your low side dropping then you know you have a leak somewhere so we'll see what we have okay so it actually held um, I actually let the nitrogen out um, just opened up my my high side and my low side and just let it come out of the yellow hose um, Just get it all out of there um, If you notice I don't have my my Schraders in there I, I just do that whenever I do any type of brazing or anything you want to take the Schraders out So then it doesn't melt these guys while you're heating up the line with the torch um, So we're gonna go ahead and put those ones back. All right. I got them in there. You just got to make sure they're nice and tight Just have to screw them in there See this actually uh, Schrader remover and with the screwdriver you actually get these at supply shops um, so you just push it in there and it turns it make it nice and tight same thing with your low side just screw it in there we go now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our gauges back on so then we can actually uh, put on a vacuum, and I'll show you that next. There's your high side. That's on top. Let's screw those on. If you notice, it says an H right there, so high side. High side is red. Same thing at the bottom. It's an L for low, low side. So that one's your blue. All right, so you get a blue one. Put it on. All right. Okay. Now we're actually going to put it on a vacuum to get all the moisture and everything out of it. Okay. You got your gauges hooked up. 
comes down to your vacuum pump hook up your yellow to here um, go ahead and flip it on make sure your gauges are open gauges are open gauges are open your yellow hose is open yes and then you go ahead and flip this on you can hear that and then you actually have to open up your valve there you go see and then you can actually feel it coming out of there it's taking out all the the air the pressure the moisture everything that's inside of there so you want this thing to run probably at least 30 minutes at least um, until we're actually in a vacuum and holding so we'll come back to that once uh, that's done okay so we're gonna actually put the fan blade together so we can actually do that next um, so here's the hub these are your uh, to tighten it up to your um, um, shaft so you want this part to go up because this is going to be the top point upward so you it's going to be turning like this and swooping the air out and pushing it out so what you do is you put this in here like that. All right. so you need the screws okay so you just got to make sure these are nice and tight these guys are nice and tight because that's to your hub so it can actually sit on that shaft make sure they're nice and tight all right so we're good so on the next side is where your allen key goes take your allen key kind of bring these out and this one over here So you're going to have to do is take out your allen keys and then from there what we're going to do is sit it on the shaft and i will show that to you next all right so we got the blade on now if you notice it's on there you just kind of have to make sure you actually put it in the right spot if it's too low or too high too high to hit the the, the fan blade will hit the motor and if it's too low it won't actually get rid of the heat um, so once you get it to where it needs to go, then you just take your Allen keys and just tighten up your screws on the sides. It actually holds it in place. It has two of them. If you notice, flat side, Allen key. Flat side, Allen key. So make sure the Allen key goes on the flat sides of your shaft. So then it actually holds it in place. If not, it'll drop and end up having bigger issues. Alright, so we're going to ahead and put this in place. All right, so we got the motor back in place. It just takes four screws there, 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 and there to hold it in place. But if you notice, it's actually going to spin this way like this. So it's actually going to push the heat out. So we'll go ahead and go, go ahead and move on to our make sure our, our unit's on a good vacuum. Okay, so we got it off of a vacuum. Um, when you actually shut it off on a vacuum, um, you want to make sure you close both of your valves here, your low side and your high side make sure both of these valves are shut because if not and you take it off your yellow one off of your vacuum pump you actually lose your vacuum and have to start all over again so make sure all your valves are shut undo your yellow hose and then right now we're actually getting it ready to weigh in the charge the 410a 410a is this purple jug and here's my scale the hose is hooked up to the refrigerant we open up the valve we tip it upside down so we can actually add liquid to the unit um, that's what we want to use um, liquid to it um, so what we're going to do is you have to make sure you zero this out so you know how much is actually going in let's see here yeah see we're actually zero out now let's make sure you push zero all right so we know how many pounds we're actually putting in i'm going to show you right now exactly how many pounds we're actually supposed to put in this if you notice i actually circled it it's a 410A that we're putting in, and it's five pounds, two ounces. So remember, it's uh, every 16 ounces is a pound. So if it's in uh, in ounces, you got it, you know, 58 ounces. You got to divide it up in um, in poundage, so you know how many pounds it's going in there. So right now we're putting in five pounds, two ounces of 410A. All right, come back around. All right, so we have to do. You open up this guy, open up your valve, 
then go ahead and start filling it up keep an eye on your how much refrigerant is going in if you notice we're actually going up now we have about a pound and a half in two pounds three pounds so we just got to keep an eye on it you know just watch your gauges all right we're almost four pounds almost about to close it up see we're actually climbing We're actually almost at five. We're at five now. Alright, so we are about about 5.18. So we're almost 5.2 ounces. So just about 0.008 or 0.002 off. So we're okay. That's actually perfect. Um, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and start it up and see what happens. So we're just going to actually wait for the unit to come on and then we'll go from there. Okay, so that's it for this one. Um, um, I will be downloading more videos. Um, the more service calls I take, the hotter it gets, the more calls we get. Um, so for right now, that's it for this one. Um, just going to keep an eye on it for another 10, 15 minutes. Make sure we're good. Pressures don't keep dropping. It stays the same. We're good. Um, so if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them at the bottom of my page and subscribe to my channel. And uh, thank you guys for watching.